You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have uh, one of my regulars, a good friend of mine, Gary Leonard. Welcome back. As long as I'm not an irregular, no, I'm, I'm no, fine. No, no, no. You're regular. <laughs> we, we, we won't talk about that. That's, yeah, then we'll go to the senior show. No, okay. <laughs> um, you and I are going to try in 18 minutes, theoretically, to talk about all the different good things that are going on about Brockton. You, you're a good news guy. Uh, a lot of pride in the city your whole life. You've been instrumental in a lot of things. Um, it's spreading throughout the city, Gary, in terms of people working together and cooperating and making this a better place to live, isn't it? And it has a lot to do with the uh, 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 Brockton Community Access, getting the news out there, letting people know exactly what's going on, when it's happening, and exactly who to contact. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. I don't want to ever hear, ever again, that yeah. there's nothing happening in Brockton. There is so much happening, you can't attend all the events. No, I mean, this weekend alone, and I'm not going to date this too much because yours and mine are going to last for at least a month, maybe. There's like competing events now. Oh, you, sure. You, you, um, you, you do have to choose. And, and you know, think about the mayor who ends up at all the different events and how he almost needs to clone himself and his staff just to get to them because he believes it's important to go Meet to the mayor's co clone. I Thank know, you. you're the clone. <laughs> the chief of staff is a clone. clone. The yeah, director yeah. of communications is a clone. Everybody's a clone. And, it's incredible. And the man needs to get a vacation every once in a while, too, which, which how do you you know, spell is, that? is pretty high. I tried one at the end of July. It didn't work, so I'm trying it again at the end of August. We'll see if it happens. Well, it's been it's, it's, three, two and a half years I've had this job, and I'm still looking for a day to take off. Right. So uh, Monday through Sunday, yeah. What do you have that's uh, coming up, not like immediately, but the rest of August, early September, you know, let's do a whole month. Let's span the whole gamut. Well, let me just give you a, a topic that, you know, this Saturday, of course, we had the James Ager Neighborhood Association putting on a big event at the park. Um, I can't tell you how many supporters are coming out donating skateboards, bicycles, backpacks, and they're giving this stuff free away. Mm -hmm. um, they're giving away uh, food. Uh, it's just a great outing for everybody uh, that's concerned. And nobody works harder to promote themselves than the Acre Park Neighborhood Association. They're going out into Camp Pello helping me put up uh, flower planters. Mm -hmm. And we put up 42 of them just in the last week to just accent the beautification that we're going to be starting in Camp Pello. And they work tidily at it. And they never ask for anything in return. Uh, they just like to see people have a good time. We had John in here, and John was talking about how his group will travel. It's not just that neighborhood park. He was talking about Camp Pello. I got to commend you and the Housing Authority for the work that was done on the former Camp Pello Cooperative oh, Bank building, now the Richard Sergi Administration building for the Housing Authority. That, I always thought, was a beautiful building, it and is. now it is again. You it, should see it, it inside. It doesn't look anything like the bank. No, nope. and the bank was nice. They did a nice job keeping yes. up the bank, but after a few years when it was empty and, you know, things happen, buildings tend to age sure. poorly when nobody's in them. Absolutely, okay? absolutely. Um, Sunset Cafes reopened over there yes, on the we corner. Yes, we had a grand opening, over, re-grand opening over there, and it was well attended. And the owner, Jose Cruz, is very happy. All his customers have returned, mm -hmm. and then some more. So again, the promotion is everything. Uh, once you try the food, you're coming back a second time. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is throughout the Capello District. I mean, Cape, Cape Cod. Cod Cafe, Italian Kitchen, Jamaican Place. I mean, we have so many new places, too. You've got to come out and try it. And that's what I'm giving everybody the opportunity to do on September 17th. Okay. September 17th, we're having Campello Community Strut. We're strutting our stuff, uh, our stuff out there in Campello, shutting down South Street to through traffic. It'll be just walked through traffic, experiencing food, music, and art. We're going to be painting the historic buildings that are on that street. Uh, we picked four buildings that um, were built in the 1800s, uh, the Keats uh, Estates, and uh, we're trying to get uh, two or three of them to be able to walk through to see the uh, architectural design that they had back in that date. And it will give a little history. Uh, we'll have a curator there telling you how the uh, building was uh, erected and what it was used for and how it became uh, to what it is today. So uh, there's a lot of restrictions being on the historical register mm -hmm. and that will be explained as well. So people that buy uh, historic houses 
and want to register them will have an idea exactly what the process is all about. Now, the, the, when you do the Huntington Parade, it goes down that street. You know, I forget what year it is. It's 200 and something, yes. I think. I think it's coming up to the 230th year. I think so. Something My mother was a teacher at that school, and that's a school that has a heart and a soul. But when you walk down the neighborhood and you look at the houses and the way they were built and the solid nature of those houses, it's, it's amazing. Pristine, um, yes. Um, yeah. Exciting, even though it was sad to see a house go, the new CVS that's the, the KFC is gone, the, the old Jack in the Box, which ended up being a health stop and a whole bunch of other things is gone, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be a transformed corner over there. It certainly is, and uh, yes, we did uh, have to take one of the uh, daughters of the Keith's property, uh, but that had a fire. Mm -hmm. and it was open to the weather just too long. Uh, they invited us in there to collect any artifacts that we thought would be advantageous, which was brought up to the uh, Historic Society. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's just a shame that the building was open to the weather that long that everything was destroyed inside. So that building did have to come down before it became a hazard to the neighbors and everybody else in the neighborhood. Is this the first for the Campello Community Strike? This is the first annual. Okay, first annual. I like it. This will happen each year, and this is where uh, the partners in this is Eastern Bank, mm -hmm. Campella Business Association, Brockton 21st Century Corp, um, Signature Healthcare, and of course, the Main Streets program. And all these sponsors, we have a tent right on the South Street parking lot. As you well know, South Street was just redone over. That was one of our first projects that mm -hmm. we did. New sidewalks, new street, New parking lot, new trees, landscape, everything's brand new there. And we're going to flaunt it a little bit on this day. And the business people in Campello for years, I mean, you've been president of the Campello Business Association as well. Yes. They've always taken a lot of pride in, you know, planters, trees, waste baskets, the whole nine yards. Right. I mean, there's a lot of pride there. Right, and there is. And the new owners that are there that you've helped to bring in, I mean, everybody's part of the... Part of the equation. Well, I told you we just put 42 planters out. Mm -hmm. And you know that I can't go out there and water 42 baskets each and every day. The businesses that they fall in front of, mm -hmm. they're coming out and making sure they're maintaining them, they're making sure the flowers are watered, they're taking out the weeds, they're taking care of them. And if there's something major to be done, like uh, they need more soil or whatever, they will call me. I will provide them with the soil, but they'll adopt these uh, planters themselves, each now, I've business. I've seen the kids all around the city, the summer work and learning. Were they down in Camp Pillow as well? Yes, they're all over the city. Uh, they're staying to the main streets, uh, Route 123, uh, 123, 28, 27, uh, around the downtown district. They're uh, doing a great job. And these are separate groups. There's about three or four different separate groups out there doing this, but they're doing a heck of a job. I just came down Belmont Street, you can tell it was just weed whacked and uh, swept up and all the dirt and uh, papers cleaned up. And I just had to roll down my window and say, guys, you did a great job. They love to hear that. We follow, More people should do this. We followed them around. Uh, Jay did a whole special that'll be going on BCA on the summer of work and learning. Kudos okay. to BCA. We, we just, uh, we got all sorts of stuff. We almost have too much, like you're talking about. We have three shows that are all done in the same week, so we got to put them on different channels just to get <laughs> them all to showcase. Did the Waldron Wiffle Ball event and the dedication of Home Course. Plate. Yes. Um, we also, the Cape Verdean Festival that just happened again without any kind of problems or incidents. Huge event. Most people almost that you see from this is anything. Probably the 22nd first year, year and three that it hasn't rained on that day. Oh, I know. It started, we were looking at it, and they, they, they love to chance it because uh, it's kind of hard to turn back. Once you plan oh, sure. an event like that, to move it, even though they have a rain day to the following week, we got Summer Sunday in the Park coming up. Not Summer Sunday in the Park. Try that again. Just Summer, summer, summer Fest. Let's summer go back fest. to Summer Fest. I'm, it's gone back and forth. It started as Summer Fest, went to the park. Now it's back to Summer Fest. That's coming up. On um, August 20th. Right. Yeah. We'll be there for that one. That's that's always a good take. And we had Bill Arnie Gally Danielson does a great on. Job. We yep. had Arnie Danielson on to talk about the uh, deep downtown Brockton Arts and Music Festival. Different venue, different location, that new gem that all year long has been promoted with all the different art events that are going on over there. There's food, there's artists, there's jewel stuff for sale, and you don't have to worry about the rain, except for the activities that are in the parking lot, which I guess they'll move inside. If they're, but he's got a three-day 
extravaganza. Yes, it's not just, just one day. Arnie, you can't contain Arnie to one day. It's got to be three. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, Arnie has a lot of uh, partners on this as well. Right. And um, one of them is his landlord, Stephen Torrey. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Torrey and I uh, have been friends for 30 years, and I worked for Steve for 25 of those 30 years selling mm -hmm. real estate. And Steve was looking at this 33 Dover Street, the old Stacy Adams shoe factory, and saying, gee, that could be a great place for residential housing. But residential housing wasn't going to change that dangerous, unsafe neighborhood. Right. And uh, I made an introduction. I introduced him to Arnie uh, for the Brockton Arts. I introduced him to the Acre Park Neighborhood Association. John Hayes is their president. And we sat down and had conversation about a collaboration. And we came up with this idea of making these into studios for artists rather than residential housing. Mm -hmm. And now Steve has, been, uh, Steve has been consumed with this. He sees where it's going. It's uh, something that he never thought he'd ever be into. Um, but now that he is into it, he's just loving every minute of it and he's supported it. And that whole neighborhood has changed from the worst neighborhood to one of the best neighborhoods. Now it's a desirable destination area. I always thought yeah. it was a gem. I was there for about a year and a half uh, in Tom Kennedy's part of the compound, as you called it. It's the, the back house. Back and house, yeah. They had a, a house next door that they didn't own originally that was falling apart, and Tommy bought it, ripped it down, and now it's a parking lot. It has a nice Irish flag up there and an American flag. And he, it's Tom like was always good on the flags. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But it was people were so nice over there. You, you, you'd go outside, and, and people didn't bother people you know we all know it's one bad apple or one isolated sure, incident sure. that gets magnified and that's why we try to do all the positive and showcase and accentuate the positive there's plenty of negative to go around absolutely it, it, and and, so and, easy and to. reporters and news media have to report on that well we're the good news media I like to say I I, I I like to you know that that old song from the 40s accentuate the positive sure, eliminate sure. the negative. negative more fun to talk positive than right. negative. But you, some people you just are geared that. for that. Some people are geared just to tell you about the bad things because they have no solutions. Right. I'd rather not hear about the bad things unless you do have a solution. Well, you can be part of the problem or you can be part of the solution. So right. let's shift back downtown area. What's new downtown? What isn't new downtown? Okay. As you well know, Alvera is finally reopened mm -hmm. after five weeks of uh, being incapacitated due to the uh, explosion that happened under the ground with National Grid's electrical problem there. Uh, she opened the doors and now she tells me she might have to take a vacation because she's been so busy. She's on her feet the, mm -hmm. the whole time she's there. We're talking about extending hours. Uh, we're talking about opening up on weekends. Things are happening. Um, there are vacancies that are being occupied. Right now 275 Main Street, which was the old Main Street furniture store, we're looking at that as maybe becoming a dinner theater. Mm. Anna Warren Street Productions have been in there and looking to maybe do uh, some of their shows inside there while people are having dinner and they'll have a home. Mm. So everybody will have an address. That's what we're looking for. Everybody's got an address. We don't need any empty storefronts. Nope. Well, uh, and if there is an empty storefront, you might see me behind the window just making faces or something, making you think there's something going on. Now and I, there's something is going on. I have a question for you. I saw something that could be a negative, could be a positive. Okay. okay. Somehow i that to a positive. Hollywood's coming to Brockton mm. on Frederick Douglass Avenue mm. in that building that's been empty for years and years and years. You guys have been talking about a business, city -owned property. Bu business incubator. Mm -hmm. um, how do you view that, just out of curiosity, good or bad? Well, I don't like the, you know, I like the idea of having movies done in Brockton. But do I always have to hear about, the, it has to be about depressed areas and things of that nature? That's what doesn't really sit well with me. Yeah, that's how I felt about it. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, yeah, people, are, some people on Facebook, oh, yeah, it's great, Hollywood's coming to Brockton. And I'm like, yeah, but do we really want to be compared to Detroit? I mean, Absolutely Detroit, not. I'm sorry, it, it, we have some bad areas, we have some empty storefronts. We're not Detroit. We can't compare and, and, and Detroit. And there's no way that anybody could ever say that. That kind of makes me angry, to be honest with you. Um, I like I, I the whole the restaurant on, incubator thing. Absolutely. Okay. Make that a walkable area. Yeah. I don't even think we should be able to even drive up Frederick Douglass Way. I think that should be shut off. Just make it like a uh, walkable Faneuil Hall type area. 
where we also got to be obtaining the Grayson Hotel across the street. Yeah. What a great place for a actual sit down, uh, five star, uh, elaborate restaurant. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where it should be. And that would just follow up the street. You got the parking garage there. I mean, you have plenty of parking. I think that would be the spot. So if you're going to park, you would have to come off of uh, Legion Parkway and L Street in order to park in those avenues. But from Main Street to L Street should be shut down to just walking I, traffic. I agree with you. And I know now that you're doing the Campello Community Strut. Yes. And I know you've been talking to me for years, years, about going Campello to, to Montello. Montello. That's probably like someplace in the works. Once all this construction is completed, mm -hmm. then we can talk more about that. But okay. I did not realize that most of the streets are having to be shut down, the side streets and everything else, due to all the construction that's going on in the city. Right. So let's let progress take its effect, and we'll be a little patient, and we will finally have that four and a half mile stretch of Potty, Hottie, and Brockton, and that will be our takeoff on this Campello I, strike. I, I love it. Now, you mentioned last time you were on activity going on with Corcoran. Is there anything new that you can tell me about? If you can't, I understand, because sometimes the business transactions, you can't. Well, we're waiting for financing. You, you know, everything's financing. Everything's about financing, tax credits. I mean, that's why I tell everybody, you know, what I do for a living, you don't see results for at least two to three years afterwards. That's when you see results. Um, for financing, uh, site work, uh, permitting, that, that could take anywhere from eight months to a year. Gotcha. Before you even break ground. Okay, well, we'll get a whole another half an hour to do that. He just gave me the cue. Oh, we got uh, the cue. Your, oh. phone, your phone number and website, um, just to, because you. New websites it. being done as we speak. Okay. Um, Herkins Francois is doing the website, so that should be done probably in another week and a half. Okay. Um, the phone number at our office is 508. 586-0021, extension 115, or my cell number at 508-802-2315. Just don't call you at 2 in the morning. No, you can call me. I'll be up. I remember, I'm at work at 4. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Mark, always, a, always pleasure. a pleasure. And again, kudos, BCA. That's what we're here for. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.